Welcome to Angle Properties of a Circle. Okay, so basically you need some knowledge from primary. In primary, we were taught a diameter subtend angle 90. So that is what I'm going to build on. That is the basic. So anytime you are asked about angles where a circle is involved, what do you need to know? Some of these are understood better if you draw and just prove yourself. Okay? So I'm not going to the details of proving. I'm just going to the tools. Okay? The tools that you need. Again, from primary, we had parallel lines and a transversal line cutting across so that you are able to comprehend opposite angles, corresponding angles, and alternate angles. So two things you should have from primary. A diameter makes an angle of 90. Okay? Then the issue of parallel lines and a transversal line, a line that cuts across. Those two you have. So whatever I'm having, you can draw and prove. But I'll just explain with respect to angles in a circle and the basic tools that you need. So let us look at this diagram. This is a circle. And this is a diameter AB. A diameter now is a special chord because a chord is a, a straight line from one point on the circumference to another point. Okay? From one point on the circumference to another point, a straight line. That is a chord. A chord divides the circle into two segments here a circle so if i draw from one point a straight line to another then that one is called a chord this is a chord so this is segment one and we have segment two okay so we can talk of major segment and minor segment okay <clears throat> so a diameter is special in what sense it does not divide the circle into major and minor but two equal segments special in this diagram the second one if i may say this is the first this is number two I have a chord PQ. A chord PQ will always subtend equal angles on the same segment. So if you remember, this is a chord PQ. I have major segment and minor segment. So it subtends. What does it mean? From the two ends of a chord, if you walk and meet on the circumference the angle formed is equal to any time you meet on circumference in the same segment that's why i've showed you angle p s q is equal to angle p r q and i've given it letter alpha so it will be the same in the same segment PQ subtend equal angles in the same segment. Keyword. Let us come down here a bit. We see here. You have, when you have a circle, before I come here, do not assume a line is a diameter unless they have said so or you have seen it is a straight line passing through a point which has been designated as the center. 
So O is the center of the circle. Therefore, AB becomes a diameter. Any straight line passing through the center of a circle is a diameter. Do not assume it is a diameter unless you are told in the question. Let us come to number three. Number three, I want us to concentrate on something I call cyclic quadrilateral. A cyclic quadrilateral. Quadrilateral has four sides or four corners. So it is in it is in the circumference. It is on the circumference. The four corners are on the circumference. All of them four. So look at this. I have two quadrilaterals here. One is O, A, B, C. Okay? But how many corners are on the circumference? A, B, and C. So this quadrilateral here is not called cyclic. So it is not applicable in what I'm going to conclude. But let us look at the second one. A, B, C, D. This is also a quadrilateral. So both qualify to be quadrilateral by virtue of having four sides. But only one qualify to be called cyclic quadrilateral. Why? The four corners, they lie on the circumference. If that is the case, then the opposite angles add up to 180 opposite angles. So I focus down a bit. Let me focus a bit down here. Yes, I think we are on focus. So what are we seeing here? That A, B, C, D is cyclic quadrilateral. So two opposite angles add up to 180. So let us give this one is alpha and this one is beta. So what do I mean now? That alpha plus beta is equal to 180. Two opposite angles add up to 180. Okay. Let us go to number four. Anytime you have a circle and a tangent. I have a tangent XZ. A tangent is a line that touches the circle at only one point. So at what point has the tangent XZ touched the circle? It is at point Y. The tangent X, XZ has touched this circle at point Y. So that is a tangent. Now, a chord LY has made an angle theta to the tangent. A chord has made a, a, an angle theta to the tangent. That means the, the angle between the chord and the tangent is known. The same chord, the same chord, remember, a chord divides a circle into two segments. So already the angle theta is on one segment. The same chord LY will subtend the same angle, but that angle will be in the other segment. Hence the word alternate segment theorem alternate provides you with understanding that there is another i have an alternate method i have another method so um, when a chord l y makes an angle theta to the tangent the same chord l y subtends the same angle, but in another segment. Remember, anytime we do 
question, you have to give us the size of the angle and the reason behind it. So I want us to focus again down, right down, as I conclude. This knowledge you were given from primary, any time we have parallel lines, we have a transversal line, okay? We have a transversal line, a line that cuts. So what happens? I have many methods, I'll give you one. As it is, I don't have a line cutting the two parallel lines. I don't have a line crossing the two. So what happened? Normally extend. So what you need to do is to extend. Like if I extend this, the parallel line, then you make this cross. So I have if I may put some letters for understanding. Mm, A, B, C, D, E. A, B is parallel to E, D. Okay? The moment you see parallel lines, he's testing three things. Opposite, corresponding, alternate. Those are the basic what we are denied in secondary is a transversal line, a line that is cutting across. So there are many methods. I'm just giving you one. Okay? What you do, the two parallel lines, extend them. Whichever you find it is easier to extend. Extend. Then make, okay, the diagram was like that. So what do you do? Bet between BC and CD. One can be extended to cut across. So, for example, I take this, we cut. So, let us have this is point F. Now, if I give you this, for example, is 170. This is angle 170. And this is angle 150. Find angle X. By doing what I've done, you will realize if this is 150, then this is this is 20, this is let's say 30, and this is uh, angle maybe 80, mm -hmm. 80 or 70 can do. Yes. So if I give you these two angles and I ask you to find angle X. After extending, you realize this is 70, this is also 70. So automatically, X becomes 100. 30 plus 70 gives you 100. Alternatively, you get, alternatively, you get here. This will be 80. Then you have angle on a straight line. Angle on a straight line is 180. So 180 minus 80, you get this is 100 still. And finally, here. This is an extension of number 2. So number 2 has part 1 and part 2. A chord EF subtends an angle alpha at the circumference. Then it will subtend angle 2 alpha at the center. So you should know these signs. This is very helpful. I've marked this angle uh, at the circumference and this angle at the center. This is like a, a, an upright cup. An upright cup. What do I mean? There and here. Then these two are related. You will never relate, never relate this and that. They can't. Either the two signs of an angle will be upright or downward or sideways. But they have to be uniform. Then you know you are okay. This is just a natural way of counter-checking. It is important for you to know basics which will help you save time.
anytime you see this question on angle properties of a circle 10 marks clean you can surprise your parents other people by only one thing understanding maths don't cram we meet